Hello everyone, this is Bob. I'm uh, recording a uh, sort of response to last uh, committee meeting. I, I had some opinions on state testing that probably should have been a little more tactful, but I think it would help if I kind of explained the backstory as to why I think uh, we could do a much better job than the way the report comes back from the state. So every year we see this report, uh, basically they put out a uh, copy of what's been pasted in the uh, state report. Uh, and it's this uh, designation of excellent, great, good, and improved, which really makes me cringe every year. And the reason it makes me cringe every year is that it's not really a reflection of how good schools are. Uh, what I did is I took the, uh, basically those language arts testing scores right out of the newspaper. That's public information. And I also took the percent of the kids that are in free and reduced cost meals. Uh, that's in the LPS statistical information that's right on the website. Uh, and what you see here is that if you map the two against each other, the excellent schools are here, the great schools are here, the good schools are here, the improved schools are here. Essentially what this is, this is a reflection of, this, of the, the income of the children who attend the school. And so we can predict years in advance who the state's going to call excellent, who they're going to call great, who they're going to call good, and who they're going to call improved. Because mostly it's just a reflection of, of the economic status of mom and dad, not the effectiveness of the school. But as you know, it, it sometimes gets misinterpreted as, as this is a good school or a bad school. And, and this is what I really, why I cringe every year when the report comes out. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you look at. Language arts looks like that. Math looks like that. Science looks like that. And if we average the scores together, it's a bigger sample size, and of course, it's even tighter distribution. Uh, and so this is probably about 85, 90% predictive. The income of the still status of the school can give you a pretty good idea of what the school is going to score for the most part, and also how the school is going to judge them. Uh, the one different thing that I think could be done better, though, that might, where I don't think this data is actually worthless, I think it is worth something, but we have to use it the right way, and it's to spot the outliers. And what you'll see is, of course, this school on every measure uh, was an outlier, and in a good way, that despite the low income of the parents, they had very good testing st school uh, results. If anything, I'd say they're an excellent school, not a great school. Uh, what's unique about that school? That's what we should study and try to see what we can reproduce. Some of you may have guessed which school it is. It's Belmont. Uh, one thing that's unique about Belmont is they got an educator, educator the, uh, there six years ago. Uh, I'm not sure if it's all that, um, but there may be other reasons as well. Uh, but from pretty much everything you look at, whether it's language arts, math, science, there's Belmont near the top. Uh, everything, and again, averaging them all out, Belmont. So something unique is there. Maybe it's the combination of Educare, the CLC, the way the schools run. Uh, I don't know enough to know for sure, but it's obviously something is going right there that a lot of the disparity uh, is made up here. Uh, as we move to a focus on equity in the next uh, year, as Matt uh, used a quote uh, at our board retreat, uh, equity is achieved when sociodemographics no longer predict outcomes. Uh, this does predict some of the outcome, but not most of it. And actually most of that socioeconomic predictor has actually been removed at Belmont. So something happens, something is achieving equity here. Uh, that's what I think we need to study. Uh, this also, the thing I'd point out, this fitted line, well, that's only us compared to ourselves. What about us compared to the rest of the state? Uh, so a better way to look at the state report uh, might be a format like this. And this uh, Rob McIntyre sent me this a while back, uh, looking at NSCAS. There's the ability to pull the data for all the schools. And the, the lighter dots are all the other elementary schools in Nebraska. The bright blue ones are ours. And so when you look at it this way, this is compared to our peers across the state. We actually have even more, potentially more outliers. Uh, so I think this, pretty sure this is Belmont here again, but also some others, which I think this one might be Randolph, for example. Uh, there's something good happening here, and this is a better uh, way, I think, of addressing who is actually an excellent school or not. Uh, I would say that excellent schools are not the schools that all happen to have wealthy families, which is essentially what the state report says right now. Excellent schools are the ones that do better than this lot, than their prediction would be. Uh, lead you to suspect. Be a school in this income status I'd expect to be about right here, but Belmont's way up here, as, as are a couple other elementary schools. This is These are the, what I would call the true excellent schools because they're getting uh, ex, uh, results beyond what their socio-demographics would predict. Uh, these schools are probably, you know, they're, they're par for the course. They're not bad, they're not great, but they're doing just as good as anybody would predict. The bad schools are actually the ones here, and even some of these, which are probably called excellent by the state, are way underperforming. I wouldn't call those excellent. I'd call these need to need to, need to improve, not this one. Uh, so these are the real, truly excellent schools, and I think this would be a better way of looking at things. We could even do it one better and look at national numbers. 
Uh, so uh, a while back, Matt showed this slide, um, which has you know basically every school district in the entire country. Again, they just are using a flat uh, rate of above average, below average using this, but really it should be a fitted line. This is not a true fitted line. This is just something I did as a mock-up best guess, we, but we could actually statistically show this and say that yes, in fact, LPS is achieving better results than predicted, not just compared to the state, but national averages. For me as a school board member, I think this is a much better way of judging whether the schools are in fact doing their job. I think it'd be much better uh, to present this to the public as well. So essentially this is what I meant by I don't like the state reports as is, but I think this is a much better way to look at them and I think it would help if we would take a look more like this. So thanks, happy to have any uh, talk more in the future. Uh, hopefully this helps explain uh, my comments a little better.